Hey guys, I'm Nick. Welcome back to Atomic Underground. This is uh, episode one of three for um, tours of my friend Doug's site in Arizona. What you're going to see in this episode is uh, mostly uncut. I've only made a couple um, minor edits to it. Enjoy. This area here, fresh dirt brought in. We're uh, trying to level it off with the antenna pads. So our house is going to go right here. Um, I don't know if you can see in the sun, but we've got this amazing, gorgeous panoramic view. The whole southern or whole the southwest part of Arizona here. Look all the way up to the right. You can see Picacho Peak and some other famous points right over this way. There you go. That's the view that you see on top of the uh, missile diagram right there, that little skyline. And so I have a half million acres of straight trust land here that nobody can build on. And so we build this house here. But if you take a look straight over that way, I've got a Walmart in the city less than 10 minutes away. It's the perfect location to build a home. So right here, we're bringing up some dirt for the house pad right now. We're trying to get this all nice and level. So the building plans of the house is a big L-shaped structure. The um, approved plan is the third, the third bay of our garage. Um, will be um, the entrance portal. So I've got a thousand pound steel door that opens up when I press a, press a button that'll be inside the bay of my garage. <laughs> the escape hatch will come up into a closet by the front door only because I don't really want it exposed outside the house. I want the airflow to be part of the house. So this is my entrance portal. funny part is, is when I first bought this property, I had a lot of weirdos trespassing. I covered it with dirt and I had a brown cloth over the door so that the Google Earth images would come up and not show the entrance portal. And um, right now, if you look at Google Earth, I think the last time I looked, you can see that little white door, but you cannot see the entrance portal. Although, I don't know, the outline of weeds, if it took it today, would probably, sh would probably give it away. But um, I'll, I'll clear this off eventually. But uh, especially when we go to build our house. So the uh, foundation of the house will go outside around it. We have permission to put the walls of the house around it as long as I don't rest on the uh, the old concrete. So basically the third bay of my garage will be the entrance portal and it'll be free floating inside the foundation of the house. Question why I use 12 volt. All right, when I first bought the property, the previous owner, had designed this gigantic heavy steel door with those two I-beams right there and he would put the forks of his forklift underneath of it and lift it off and then I'd have to go get a generator. Well, I got tired of that real quick so we got commercial power run here really quick and we automated opening the facility. Now I admit, this part is manual. I have not yet automated bringing my lift all the way up. Come on aboard. <laughs> that was the perfect height, isn't it? Uh, it goes up higher, but not much. It's a, it's a 36 foot lift and, and I think I have maybe one foot, foot of play. All right, so you can you can film this part. You ready for this? Yep. No All right, very much like a Disneyland ride, I'm going to advise you to keep your hands and your fingers inside the ride at all times. If you'll notice, there is zero inches of clearance. If you put your hands right here, it'll take your fingers right off. So keep your all hands right. and feet inside the ride at all times. Are you ready? Yep. This was all dynamited. You can see where the new concrete had to be poured. So we had to put in forms 
and put in all new concrete all the way around. Yours was not as bad as mine. Mine went down there. Oh, did it? Yeah. We got some sites in Arizona like that one that just sold. They weren't missing more than six inches around the rim. Oh, so in stupid. In fact, they still had their whole landing. Huh. Yeah, you've got the remnants of it. A little bit. Yeah, mine is down on, let's see, so this would be, here's one. So mine's down below where the stairs came in there on, you know, what I call level two of the access portal. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, one other thing, I'm not sure if your video would get this, but my roof is big, heavy steel I-beams with big, thick, more than quarter inch thick plate. The previous owner told me he's parked an 18-wheeler on top of this and didn't even bow or flex. <laughs> so I have no problems using this as the floor of my garage when the time comes. All right, we're gonna go on down. familiar with that where that came from it's the original operations board was left in the site and this is one of the things that really disappoints me was the previous owner left it out here in the water to be destroyed when he pulled it out it was pristine but he threw it out here before he built the roof and there was a lot of water in this entrance portal here and it got all destroyed so this, this is a sad thing for me because this would have been a really cool piece of history. Yeah. But there are some other sites where these have been preserved perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. All right. My door swings easily. That's 6,000 pounds. It takes a little bit of, to get it going, but once it does, it swings beautifully. And you gotta kinda stop it before it slams shut. Would have been interesting as a crewman to pull this thing open and close multiple times a day. Remember there's four of these in the complex. So I've actually just run the, the uh, Romex right here. And yes, I know I don't have a plate on here. Don't you freak out, I'm the only one that comes down here. Um, I don't plan on putting the conduits and everything in permanent, making this permanent until I do the painting. So this room right here was the electrical room. It was a less secure room. They only had to get through one of the doors. There's another door here. Um, I still have a lot of stuff in my site that a lot of others don't. There's electrical stuff that hadn't been cleared out yet down there. Um, I have a friend of mine who turned this into a wine rack. <laughs> so, um, yes, that sump system still works down there. This drain system still works. So if any water was able to come into that entrance portal, this drain system right here would have taken care of it. Yours is probably so filled with sediment and stuff. Oh, my mud right now is uh, you know, two and a half feet deep. It comes... Oh, wow. It's This room is a little different in my side at the moment. Okay. So this is one of my favorite little rooms because this is the room where I got the locks working. Actually, I have the locks working in every single room. There are 16 locks on the four doors, and I have 15 of the 16 working. Out there, you might have noticed in an earlier video, the panels off in the front, a pin broke off inside there. These massive hydraulic cylinders that come out are not straight attached to the pins. They actually have a scissor system with a, with a hinge pin, and the pin rusted out on that one. So I have to 
handcraft or hand machine a new pin for that other um, lock out there. But I have 15 to the 16 working. So what I've done on this particular door, this door is normally locked, and I have a key and a combination to get in here to push the buttons to activate the hydraulics, which are on the other side of the door, to unlock these locks. And in another video, I will show you those functioning. Um, I keep, you know, I had to replace the, the various gauges and, and stuff. It's probably not as pretty as the original military work was. But it's all mill spec fittings. It was, a, it was an interesting education for me to learn how to um, do military, uh, what's called mill spec fittings on everything, because um, standard fittings, commercial fittings that we would use on your tractors and your backhoe, they have the wrong angles on the connectors and they will leak. So you have to use the military stuff. Um, so I've tried to maintain all the military fittings on everything. So for those of you who are watching, her says, well, wait a minute. If all the hydraulic pumps and everything are on the other side of the door, what if it fails? You can't open the door. And yes, the military thought of that. Every single door had a manual backup system where they would open this up and they would attach a manual pump and they could open that door to bypass the hydraulics. I have the same thing on this door, but since I'm not down here all the time, you still have to get into the safe to get to the ports. So my ports, my manual backup, are also in the safe with the switch. That's welded to the wall, by the way. So I still have the person who's before me left a lot of steel in here. This all has to come out. I think he believed it was structural. It's not, but just more work for me to do. So when you gut your site, make sure you have all that stuff yep, taken out. Yep, they're coming out. So there's cool stuff left in my site. I still have the, I still have the buttons, open the doors. I still have some of the phones laying around. Um, a lot of light, there's a red one. I have a lot of light fixtures. <laughs> I, have, I have the reds, the yellows, and the whites all over the place. In fact, there's a pile of them on the floor right here. And a whole pile of light fixtures over there. So this part right here, this is the decontamination room. This is part right here. Right here is where they used to hang the astronaut suits, for lack of a better term, if you've ever seen them. They're um, those Refco. What's that? Refco suits. Yeah, so they're all they're basically big rubber suits. Yeah, you see, I got a nice phone right there. Trump? Oh, here you <laughs> Doesn't go to Washington anymore. Actually, that phone just went to the command center. So the suits would hang here. This was actually. Right here was a giant, do you have this in yours, a big cabinet? No, it's gone. There was a big giant cabinet right here that held um, first aid stuff, but it didn't touch the floor. It, it was off the floor. It was suspended on these. So there's a giant cabinet. So if you go to the museum, you'll be able to see that. And this right here was an emergency shower. All these jets, when they came out of this tube and they're wearing their spacesuit, and if they had been contaminated, they hit this lever. <laughs> And they would get blasted with jets of water in all directions um, because they just use basic water to decontaminate themselves. So you're probably asking about the dirt. Dry Arizona dirt. Dry. I love it. There's no water down here. So, as you know, in Arizona, the tunnels were completely removed. And then they filled it all in. So some of the dirt kind of caved into here. My plan right now is to just break this up, clean out the dirt so that I can convert this room and use this room. I do hope someday to put in a new tunnel. Um, it actually isn't as expensive as I thought it was when I did the research, but I gotta, I gotta dig down 35 feet, all the way over for 200 feet to the command center or to the, uh, to the silo and put in that tunnel. That's a project for another day, but for now, I just need to wall this up. And uh, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. I thought this would make a perfect Hobbit door. <laughs> just, just, just as a decoration. But that's uh, something I haven't got to. I still have a lot of steel in here that's got to be cut out. A lot of the stuff's got to be cut out. But at least it's dry. Still have a bunch of these lights up here. Maybe I'll sell them. Yeah, we got a bunch of people emailing me that want them. Got these door lights. 
the door, these are the switches. I have one of these that was professionally restored. Nice. So I have all of them, I have all, of, all eight of them. One on each side of the door, I have seven here in the silo. One's in my office. They, we sent it in and had it restored back to its original condition. It's just gorgeous. I'll show, remind me to show you that before you leave. So <clears throat> you have these as well. These are the one-way air vents. These are what allow air to flow this way only. Because air flowing this way would have been toxic, potentially, with the fumes of the rocket towards the, the people working here, all airflow in the complex was designed to go that direction. So these um, things in here are just, just like, um, they, have, they have the big tubes up inside the walls and any kind of a blast will cause these to compress and shut off the air and prevent any of the fumes of the rocket blast from going that direction. Um, there's some cool hydraulic actuators in there and stuff for testing, but those are one-way air valves. We have them here, and we have them inside the blast lock building as well. 